and welcome to the 2020 Writers Trust Awards Career Honors Edition. In lieu of in-person celebrations in our time of COVID, this year the Writers Trust is going digital to award more than $300,000 to Canadian writers. In this series of interviews, prize jurors from each of the Writers Trust Career Awards will be chatting with recipients about their lives as writers, their work, and what's next for each of them. My name is Susan Perrin. This year, I served on the Vicki Metcalf Award for Literature for Young People as a juror, alongside writers Caroline Addison and Keel McClear. More than 50 years ago, Vicki Metcalf created a prize to celebrate the writing of literature for children, for Canadian children, that honored writers who took creative risks and demonstrated sustained excellence throughout their careers. She recognized that a community of writers for children that is strong, vibrant, and imaginative would help foster a healthy community of readers, that these writers would instill a love of literature at an early age and create lifelong readers. On behalf of the Writers Trust, I'm grateful to the Metcalf Foundation for making this $25,000 prize possible. I'm thrilled that this award celebrating the confluence of young people, writers and creativity is included among tonight's prizes, signaling that remarkable artistry is required to write well, whether for an audience of young children, teenagers or adults. This year's winner has created an unforgettable and enchanting oeuvre of stories, funny and intimate, her books orbit the deepest of subjects, casting questions of friendship, loneliness, change, and loss with the lightest of lines and quietest grace. Many writers for children are frightened of the blank page, but she uses white space and silence with great confidence, demonstrating a profound, a profound respect for her child readers. She knows children are sage and curious and holders of immense feeling. She knows, as children know, that a story is often what happens between words. She lets us all in. With this award, we are delighted to celebrate and honor a writer and illustrator whose quiet brilliance is showcased in her growing body of work. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the 2020 Vicki Metcalf Award for Literature for Young People is Marianne Dubuc. Marianne is an author and illustrator of 20 children's books, including In Front of My House, The Lion and the Bird, and Mr. Postmas's Rounds. Her books have been translated from the original French into, 20 lang into 30 languages and have been published in 30 countries. Dubuc is a recipient of two TD Canadian Children's Literature Awards, the Ruth and Sylvia Schwartz Award for Children's Picture Books, two Governor General's Award, Literary Awards, and the Harry Black Award. She lives in Montreal with her family and is in here with us today. Hello, Marianne. It's wonderful to have you here and congratulations to you. Thank you very much for those kind words and for the award, of course. <laughs> what a pleasure. The Vicki Metcalf Award is just the latest. Could we go back to your past, specifically to your childhood? What are your earliest memories of books that have been read to? Uh, and I just interrupt with a little aside. Uh, in the bus ride, um, a little girl is put on a bus to go and visit her grandmother. She's carrying a red cardigan, red, red sweater, and a basket. And a curious crew of occupants come and go on this bus ride, sloths hanging from the ceiling and snails on seats and bears and a slightly ominous family of wolves. I'm taking this as a sly and delectable allusion to Le Petit Chaperon Rouge, Little Red Riding Hood. Were fairy tales part of your childhood? Uh, well, I, I they, for sure they were. Like if all of us I've read, I've been told the stories of the, those fairy tales. And um, But I really like to use them in my books. I like to hide them in pages yeah. and make allusions to them. I, can you say that in English, I guess? Yes. So, and when I wrote The Bus Ride, which is really like a 
story of a girl who goes to see her grandmother and takes the bus and all kinds of things happen on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that adding that other layer of text, like the, the reference to the Red Riding Hood would be fun and would, be, would add to the story. So that's why I used it. Yes, and, it's, 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 there's a richness to it, I think. You know. I think it's fun when you read a book and you see something you already know and then you feel mm. really intelligent that you, you feel uh -huh. smart. So that's kind of a game I play with the reader and the young readers, especially. Mm -hmm. And But going back to my childhood, I guess I've been told stories. I remember more loving images and uh -huh. being uh, like amazed and impressed by uh, images in books. My grandmother wa was uh, loved books and loved to read and she gave us many bo books, but it was really the image that really uh, like mm -hmm. is a memory from my childhood. Uh -huh. But my grandmother had the, the disc of uh, Peter and the Wolf uh -huh. and we listened to it. And I remember loving the images too. Of that uh -huh. one. So it's, a, it's more the images that struck my, my uh -huh. nation as a kid. Yeah. And I read more later, actually. <laughs> and did you start making art as a child? And in what form? I would, I'm an only child. I don't have uh -huh. any sisters. And, my, and I'm the firstborn of my generation. So I didn't have any cousins for a long time. Mm -hmm. So um, my parents would bring me to their adult suppers and parties. And I would have to keep busy and just and like... Amuse yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would draw all the time. It was my favorite activity. My pencils and crayons were my favorite gifts. Uh -huh. So that's really uh, what I like to do as a kid. And I like to um, faire du bricolage, to do crafts. Like I would mm -hmm. always like have scissors and glue and things. Mm -hmm. So it was really like my main interest as a child. When and how did you move into the formal study of art? Well, after high school, I had to choose for a cégep here in Montreal. And um, my father suggested I try to go into arts, letters and um, communications. Like yes. And so I was going for arts and literature, and then he added the movie part. So that's it. as he proposed me one, one specific program, and I got in. And then afterwards, I knew I wanted to do art, but not like just visual arts as an artist. I didn't think I have like the artistic like vibe, or I don't know. So I was going for graphic design. That's what, what I went to in, and also um, teaching arts. But, <laughs> It ended up with graphic design and uh, I took all of the illustration classes and after that I just applied on a contest and won and that's when I started making books. <laughs> uh, was La Mer part of that early, uh, that, your first book? La Mer, yeah. The, uh, yeah, well, how did I, it come I, about? I, uh, I applied to a contest, an illustration contest, contest called uh, Lux Graphica here mm -hmm. in Montreal and on the, the jury was uh, Martin Bro from, from La Pastèque, the publishing house. Yes. And as when they announced the winners, I won for a personal research category. Uh, they offered me to make a book. So that's all how I made La Mer, which is my first book and is a wordless picture books book. And these books are my favorite ones because I love when you have to read the story through the images and yes. you can decide whatever happens in the book. So that's mm -hmm. the, first, the first and only book I made without words, but they are my favorite kind mm -hmm. of books. But even your books with words are the the words are uh, absolutely minimal, but carry a huge weight. I would say, you know, for some books, you could say you could not read the text and it work would work anyway. So yeah. you could say yeah. sometimes the the text isn't necessary, but otherwise, yes, I put as little words as possible usually. Uh, uh, the visual. Uh, you, you use maps uh, or sort of mapping to take characters from one place to another, which I find quite, quite uh, interesting and, and, and lovely for a child's mind's eye to carry them through that, I think. Well, it, it kind of all happened, I think, because of the, the way I write my stories. When I, I start looking for an idea or when I get, a, a, I start from a small, like maybe a, a and I, when I know about what kind of story I want to write, uh, right away, I will draw the whole thing. I, I see it really in images in my head and I draw it in images, which takes more pages than I would like sometimes, <laughs> but uh, which makes my book more um, cinematographic. Like yes. there, there is kind of that and yes. it leaves less, spa less space for the words and more for the images. And that's what gives books with the flow. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. how it. Yeah. So it's, I was going to ask you what you start with, art or word, but it's clear that it's, it's both. Art. 
it's yeah, but, but I have a big art, the image first, right? Yeah, image is in my head first. And when I have the big, the, the, the outline of the story, actually, like the main events of the story, I'll put my, my, my notebook away and I'll draw the whole book, like pages. I will redraw the whole thing. So it's really the image that, the image that tells the story. Mm -hmm. first. And then I'll go back to the text. So there's really a back and forth thing going on. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, could you tell us a bit about your process and when and how and where do you work? Do you go to a studio? Is it a room of one's own that you can retreat to and create your magic? Yeah, well, these days with, the, these <laughs> day with the pandemic, I'm at home and it's really hard. But usually I like to go out because I work from home. And when I'm in like searching for a story or writing, I really need to focus and I have a hard time at home. So I usually go to the, there's a, um, a library next to our house, which I really love, which is really like a lot of windows and it's really nice. Or I go, I'll go to cafes or things like that just to be out and be really focused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I can come back home and just do the illustrations. But for the, really the, creating of the book yes you need to be really focused so and I work from home and I, I started making books when I had my first son and but my, my only son I had a son and a daughter daughter so yes. kids. and uh, I've always worked with my kids around so I kind of find found a way of working at night during the night or so it was it's all mixed with my uh, yeah. everyday life. well highly successful I would say <laughs> um, <laughs> Does each book occupy your undivided attention in the sense that you're working on that one thing, or do you do an, um, a number of different things at the same time? Well, I have to do different things at the same time because life, but I can't really work on two books at the same time. I you haven't. cannot. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's understandable. Yeah. When I, I write a book, I like to stay in the ambiance of the book, mm -hmm. and it's if I have to get out and get into another project, so my, my books are really different from one another sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, I find it hard. So what I usually do when, when I have to, because sometimes I have to finish a book and start another one, depending on the calendar and things like that. Yeah. So uh, I'll use music to stay focused on one book. So mm -hmm. when I start a project, I pick a kind of music that I really find fits the book or the idea I have of what I want to do, mm -hmm. and I'll put it on. So this helps me switch. If, I, if ever I have to switch from one yeah. project to the other, it helps me to get back in, on the same uh, line of the... Is there any particular music? Oh, usually, like, uh, I like minimalist music. Yeah, <laughs> Things that are part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Arvo part, actually, my my children have been going to sleep with it for 12 years the same album every night so I don't really use it for my books because it's not really like a work related thing I go to sleep when I hear it but that kind of family of mm -hmm. course exactly yeah very interesting um could you do you have a muse that's or inspiration that's sort of guided you through your career or parts of your career well, not a muse, but I really go back to my feelings as a ch child, like my memories of the way I would feel at some points. Like, as you said, at first, some, my books talk about loneliness sometimes or friendship. And it's always, I find that the thing that really drives most of my personal book, books are uh, is the relation to the other. That's really something, and I know if I don't know if it's my, I'm a, a known only child, and that's why I'm so focused on relation to the other. <laughs> but that, so there's no one in particular, but it's way more like of a personal memory thing. That's where I go back always when I want to write a story. Yeah. Um, the natural world and uh, small and big animals, um, sometimes big animals, quite often small child ch relatable animals are a big part of your work. And is the natural world of concern, special concern for you? Like ecologically uh, yeah I mean, like, uh, yeah I, of course like everyone yes but i think that the reason why i use animals and nature a lot in my books might be because i live i grew up was born and grew up in montreal in the city i didn't have mm -hmm. such a, a close contact with nature maybe it has something romantic for me mm -hmm. that i might not have if i had grown up outside of the city yes i i did go like in the forest, but I grew up like in Montreal. Yeah. So I think it has something really romantic. Also, the, as I grew up, the, the, I, I watched a lot of television 
and uh, most of the TV shows had animals in them, and it was uh, took place in the forest. And I think it's really like my my imagine, imagine, yeah. imaginary world is really linked to that too. So that's yeah. probably why it always comes out that way. I'm more at ease with animals. Behind you is the is um, a, a page from uh, the Lion and the Bird, which will give people an indication of your your talent and your approach. And I think it's very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so what's up next? What are you working on now? Well, with the pandemic, I think it's actually really hard to work on something. I have, we have our, our daughter at home. We're homeschooling her this year and I can't go to work outside the house so I can't focus. <laughs> so I find it really hard. I have a story I wrote and I'm trying to work on it. I don't know actually right now how, where it's gonna go. So, and I have another other project for another publisher that's what I'm working on. So mm -hmm. not sure yet. <laughs> well, uh, we will be watching with great interest to see what you have up your sleeve, so to speak. Again, congratulations and thank you so very much. Well, thank you very much for the award. It's a great honor. I'm really flattered. I'm also impressed by the situation. So thank <laughs> you very much and uh, I'm really happy. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. You can listen and watch the other interviews with this year's Writers Trust Career Prize winners on SoundCloud at Writers Trust or on YouTube at Writers Trust of Canada. On YouTube, you can also watch the Writers Trust Awards Emerging Writers Edition and Books of the Year Edition, celebrating the best in Canadian literature. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>